In this video, we are going to discuss about factors, uh, sorry, uh, the different types of stern design, okay. And uh, before going on to directly to the stern design, that is cruiser stern, transom stern, elliptical stern, and what are its construction features, what are the advantages of all the three stern, because stern design is one of the most difficult process in uh, ship building and ship construction. Okay, uh, so uh, what are the factors that are considered in stern design? The first one is the hydrodynamic efficiency. Though there has to be a hydrodynamic efficiency, then we have construction simplicity. So the construction has to be simple. The flow pattern around, because you have seen, we have already discussed about the bulbous bow and its construction. So there also the flow pattern is important. So here the same way. And there are some aesthetics, okay. Now, what are the criteria governing the choice of the ship's turn? It should be designed to provide low resistance. It should be able to provide high propulsion efficiency by ensuring uniform inflow of water to propeller. The stern design must avoid vibrations. These are important. Now, there are three uh, uh, classified uh, broadly stern design and stern design is basically two major part that is top side and underwater part that is the lower side the above three these elliptical cruiser these electrical cruiser and transom is ab only about the top part don't get don't get confused about the low lower part okay we are not discussing about the lower design stern design top side we are discussing and the three parts are elliptical stern cruiser stern transom stern uh, cruiser stern earlier used to be the most favored one but today, most of the vessels, they have transom stern. So we'll begin with electrical sterns are mostly, they are uh, obsolete. Uh, you'll find in smaller uh, yachts, ferries and all things. You may find it. Okay. Now, merchant ships or electrical stern or counter stern or cutaway sterns. Merchant stern, electrical stern, counter stern, cutaway stern. These are the three, uh, four names that are given to uh, electrical stern sorry three names the conventional it was it is a conventional form okay it is a, it is what um, the conventional form of stern design and uh, if viewed from above the deck line and the knuckle line are roughly electrical in shape if viewed from the top the neck line and the knuckle line are roughly elliptical in shape okay so you can see in the diagram now upwardly curved profile beginning four of the aft perpendicular similar to cruiser stern cutaway for the rudder occurs above the water line this is important cutaway for the rudder occurs above the water line now pronounced aft overhung and exposed skeg now the benefits of electrical stern is larger deck space in aft measurable amount of reserve buoyancy is provided and it also provides an aesthetic choice to the owner so these are advantages so the cutaway for the rudder occurs above the water line now when we talk about cruiser stern that initially designed only to lower the steering gear below the armor deck characterized by an upward curl profile from the after perpendicular to the main deck or poop deck cutaway for the rudder occurs below the water line Okay, that was above the water line. That is, uh, this one is below the water line. So this is uh, very significant and important. Better resistance characteristics than the merchant stern. So it is in all comparison to the elliptical stern. Because elliptical stern only got modified to cruiser stern and then the cruiser stern got modified to transom stern. Better resistance characteristic from the merchant stern. Length of the water plane with a cruiser stern is greater than LPP more pleasant profile and is hydrodynamic uh, dynamically efficient subjected to large slamming force substantial construction with adequate stiffening is required solid floors are fitted at every frame spaces i hope you know what are solid floors bracket floors and uh, watertight floors heavy center girder is fitted uh, right aft at the shell and the deck the stern plating is stiffened by cant frames or webs with short cant beam supporting the deck leading to the adjacent heavy transverse deck beam. Further stiffening of the plating is provided by horizontal stringers extending to the first transverse 
frame so the diagram that we are showing it is uh, here this is cruiser stern okay now when we talk about transom stern the, this is the diagram for the transom stern characterized by a generally flat shape extending in uh, to the water line greater deck area aft simpler construction provide improved flow around the stern flat surface may uh, begin either at or above the water line of the vessel cruiser stern whose aft mode portion is cut off so that will become transom stern so as i said that elliptical got transformed into uh, cruiser cruiser got transformed into uh, tra transom stern now cant frames here it is not provided there uh, we had cant frames okay the cant frame was there in uh, your cruiser stern but here we don't have cant frames flat stern plating may be stiffened with vertical uh, stiffeners deep floors and a center girders are provided at the lower region when we talk about the design consideration because transom stern you will find mostly in all the vessels so we'll discussing transom stern a little more depth so the edges of the square stern must be sharp so that the flow separates cleanly while optimizing the design of the stern stability of the ship is given more priority to the width of the stern okay stability is given more priority that is very important to know and uh, answer the stability of the ship is given more priority now see here the stern and the uh, that was that we were discussing about the edge the corners now the stern and in particular its underside influences the propulsion efficiency lesser the turbulence in the area between the propeller and the outer shell above the propeller more will be its efficiency now this is the area this is this has to as much as less it will be more will be the propulsion efficiency okay less will be the turbulence all these factors are taken into consideration and this is achieved this less area this is achieved in transom stern design only okay now the resistance in slow speed operation is noticeably higher in transom stern than that of the ship with cruiser stern due to formation of vortices there there you will have the formation of vortices okay the deck or transom stern ships can easily get wet during reversing operation and in a heavy sea the water is dumped up flare and knuckle deflect the water better uh, during astern operations avoiding deck flooding okay you see here the reduction in the power of a transom stern compared with a cruiser stern with fruit number that is approx 10% at fruit number that is 0.5 this reduction in power is less due to the fact that the reduction in the resistance is less at the cost of improving the propulsion efficiency and the propulsion efficiency was we, we already discussed that uh, was because of the design that uh, the gap that we had Uh, between the clearance between the stern and the propeller because of this we are achieving more propulsion efficiency okay so that is the that is all together so i hope it is clear for you now there is a there is there is a separate uh, design and that is about that is uh, constangi stern it is a hybrid stern design of transom stern and some other modifications in transom stern that is done uh, if you have heard of it there is a cruise liner that is queen mary 2 and that uh, had to go in north atlantic winter where we had a lot of turbulence and disturbance sea is not worthy uh, okay so that is the reason this hybrid stern was taken into consideration so there is a lot of improvement in stern design altogether this is not fixed to these three only I, it was just to pass on an information for you thank you so much